director and writer Nigel Planner is also a fan of Robert Louis Stevenson and has written a play, Death of a Long Pig, about his final years. Here he explains just why this classic author floats his boat. I've been fascinated by Robert Louis Stevenson for about 30 years. It all began with a photograph of him which I cut out and kept long before I knew anything about him. Very charismatic, he looks like a radical, a passionate, long-haired bohemian, or poser, as Henry James described him before they got to know each other. His stories have remained popular, iconic even, for over a hundred years. Treasure Island, Kidnapped, Jekyll and Hyde. But he also wrote essays, poems, plays, history, anthropology, biographies, and in my opinion, most successfully, was also a prolific travel writer. Although he always considered Edinburgh to be his home and went on about it until the day he died, he does seem to have spent most of his life trying to get away from it. Firstly, to London, to join the literary scene, here at the Savile Club, where he was an early member. Stevenson was ill for much of his childhood, and it was ostensibly the harsh Scottish climate that forced him southwards with his weak lungs. So the given excuse for his wanderings was his health. But I think there would have been no holding an adventurous spirit like his wherever he'd been born. At various times in his life, Stevenson lived in France, Switzerland, Australia, America and Hawaii. And his last eight years were spent sailing around the South Seas, ending up in Samoa, where he died at the age of 44. He certainly got about for a so-called invalid. The legend has it that Stevenson was playing pirates with his stepson one wet Scottish summer holiday, drew a map, called it Treasure Island, made up the story and read out a chapter every night to the rest of his family. That he was already in communication at the time with the editor of a boy's fiction magazine and soon after published the serialised version of what was later to be called Treasure Island is perhaps ignored in this pleasing tale. In later biographical writing, Stevenson is quite open about the influences that went towards the making of the book. Plagiarism was rarely carried further, he happily admits. Washington Irving, W.H.G. Kingston, Daniel Defoe, Captain Marriott and Edgar Allan Poe are all listed as sources by Stevenson himself with his usual charm and frankness. I see that romantic surroundings are the worst surroundings possible for a romantic writer said Oscar Wilde of Stevenson's interesting later work. And it would seem that the rest of the London literary set agreed. They disapproved of his experimentation in different genres. He was censored by editors, publisher and family. The story goes that his wife Fanny made him burn the first draft of a manuscript because she didn't like the references to loose women. I personally doubt he would have actually carried that out and his overbearing father once bought up every copy of an early book rather than allow his son's radical opinions to be broadcast. It seems everybody wanted him to stay in one place and he just wanted to keep moving. Of course, he was a tremendously popular author in his day and perhaps it's this that riled some of his contemporaries and critics. His sales were enormous, like J.K. Rowling nowadays. He was also one of the first to make it big in America and was surprised to find himself mobbed when he landed in New York. My reception was idiotic. If Jesus Christ came, they would have made less fuss. He said in 1887, preempting John Lennon by about a hundred years. After his death, his work fell out of critical favour, even if the sales of his fiction never dwindled. His books were excluded from school curricula and in the 2,000 pages of the Oxford Anthology of English Literature he wasn't mentioned once. E.M. Forster called his work not first class. Nowadays, however, he's experiencing something of a critical resurgence, possibly because genre fiction is no longer considered undignified by the literati. My own personal feeling is that Stevenson was just hitting his stride at the time of his sudden death. With South Sea Tales, finally, away from the London literary scene and Edinburgh, a place where it is impossible to escape the past, as he put it, he was finally coming into his own and becoming a modernist, a man ahead of his time.